Hi and welcome to the next pipeline video. So in this video I'm going to show you the second use case for pipelines we're really focused on in 3.0, which is collecting data, modeling that, buffering that, and then sending it up to cloud storage in the form of either Amazon S3 or Azure Blob Storage. And I just saw my case, so I'm going to fix it. I'm going to cheat a little bit and kind of pre-configure some of these connections. The two I'm going to have is just an, an Amazon S3. I don't have any outputs configured on this. Just an S3 connection, and then the Blob uh, connection, which is pretty similar. Uh, if you jump up, these are, you know, in the Blob storage, I have an empty container. S3, I have an empty bucket uh, to start. So the first piece, which you've kind of seen, so I'll, I'll cruise through pretty quick, is I've just got an OPC server. You know, I'm collecting. In this case, I'm reading off a branch of data. If I expand that, you know, this is the branch. I've gone into, so I'm, I'm modeling this, so I'm calling these bearings. As an example, they have temperature, speed, uh, this is vibration X, Y, and Z in a timestamp. And then in my instance, I have a single instance. I'm just going to call it conveyor one. And I've done, um, I've just drag and drop, you know, parts of whatever parts of this branch. It's all simulated data in here. And then I, I do have a timestamp that is the time at which this instance is put together. So I'm putting a timestamp on there. And if I do a test read on that, you can see this is the model data. This is the stuff uh, High Byte's always done. We do, we do really well. So. Uh, this is my model data, but now I actually want to send that up to cloud storage, and I, I want to do that in a way that isn't every single update sending it to cloud because you'll get billed pretty heavily for that, um, and it's just not efficient. I want to buffer that over a period or a number of updates and send that as a, as a chunk, and it's a balance between how real-time I want it versus cost. Uh, so traditionally in Hybite, if you try to do this, you'd have to really set up two flows. One flow is going to gather the data, model it, and then the next flow, and then store it to disk locally, you know, in whatever file format you need, CSV or Parquet. The other one's going to pick up those files as they land and then send it off to S3. It works, but as you try to scale that and you have many sources of data, many files, it gets kind of clunky. So pipelines are a much better way to do this, and I'll show you that today. So I kind of have the, the source piece of that uh, figured out. And I did start to create a flow uh, to a pipeline that doesn't exist. So this flow is just going to take the conveyor model and send it to a pipeline. So let's go create that pipeline. So I'll call it data to cloud. And in this case, the first thing I want to do is buffer. So we have two ways to buffer uh, data and pipelines. We have a size buffer and a time buffer. We already have the requirement for a mix of these, right? So you know, size up to a certain time. So you'll see us do that probably in 3.1 as an enhancement. In this case, I'm just going to make it a, a sized buffer. And I'm going to call it you know 10 updates. So this is going to buffer data uh, in 10 updates, and then what I'll, I'll do is send it on to S3. Now, I'll, I'll show this feature, um, and this is a little, it, it's, it's fairly programmatic at this point, but the idea is that you could have multiple flows or a single flow sending sources to this buffer stage, and then we would actually keep, you have the ability to keep separate buffers per source of data. Right now, since this is null, it just means it's a single buffer. If I have multiple sources, it's all in one buffer. When that buffer reaches 10, it's going to send on. But you have the ability to control that, and I'll come back and show you how to do that. So I'm going to uh, use the right to new target, and I'm going to call this AW. Oh, actually, wait, I'm skipping a step. Uh, so I've buffered the data. Now I need to transform it uh, to a format. And you can see we have CSV, JSON, and Parquet currently. In this case, I'm just going to use CSV. Uh, so the model data is going to come in. We're going to buffer 10 updates, and then we're going to send it out over CS, or transform it to CSV, <coughs> and then finally write uh, to the new target. I'm going to call this, first one I'll do is S3. So I'll pull in the S3 connection, and this is a what we call a dynamic uh, output. So this doesn't actually statically exist on the S3 connection. I'm creating it in the context of the pipeline. In here, I do need the bucket name, which is static. So if you come up here, it's just my name. And then the key, um, the key, I'm going to do this. I'm going to use event metadata. And we're going to have to go back and change something to make this work. Um, buffer key. And then, so this is basically the file name that shows up in S3. And the other one I'm going to do is you can put that JavaScript in here. Uh, before you had to use custom conditions to do this. Now you can just kind of do it in line, which is pretty cool. So this is going to be the, the buffer key and then the, the time, the timestamp of when this is written out. Uh, and I'm going to save this. And I forgot to wire up uh, the last piece. There we go. So I, I lied. I'm going to come back here. And what, what I'm going to do is instead of uh, keeping this like a global buffer, 
I'm going to partition it based off the name of the event, which in this case, since I'm pushing model data in, the name is going to be the name of the instance. Otherwise, it would be like the name of the input or connection. Uh, but, but this means that if I pull other uh, instances in, they're going to get different names. I could also use event.model, I think, uh, if I want to like group things by model. This could be completely dynamic. It's JavaScript. but uh, And I think in the future, you'll see us have a more user configurable setting <coughs> to kind of control the... Uh, the partitioning it's basically a partition of the buffer but functionally it's in there uh, so let me save that all right so now i'm going to take the flow and i'm just going to turn it on and if i've done everything right this pipeline is receiving an event every second it's waiting to buffer up 10 of those and i'm going to turn on activity tracking to kind of see that And it's a little tricky because activity tracking is going to show up to 10 events. Uh, one of these events, should it should actually pass through and go on to the next stages, but it's kind of hard to catch that in this mode, so we might not be able to see it. <laughs> but in either case, uh, let me go back to S3 and refresh. And you can see uh, the key name of the buffer, so I'm buffering by the instance name. And there's the instance name timestamp, and if I were to download one of these... Um, and open it up. You'll see it's the nice model data in CSV format. I could change this to parquet format, and that would come through different. It'd just be you'd have to get a viewer to go go see it. So now that I have that pipeline, I can also easily come down and extend that to blob, and I'll drag in blob storage. Uh, can Container name is Aaron Test Container. And the blob name, I'm going to use a similar thing. So I'm going to go event dot, uh, yeah, event dot metadata dot uh, buffer key and then underscore date now. <coughs> and everything else can remain standard. And then I'm just going to wire this in so we can kind of branch. We don't have an actual branch stage with logic yet. Uh, inside of pipelines, that, that's coming probably in 3.1. The ability to, to do some logic and decide which switch you'll go down. But this just means the output of the CSV will go to both. The event will be driven uh, to both uh, outputs. So now, if I come up and look at Azure, assuming... Let's just check the connection. It looks good. Probably just waiting for the 10 updates. There we go. So there's one. So it's the same thing, right? Same data format coming to Azure. Now what's really cool about this is if I now go into instances, so my pipeline's configured, it's partitioning based off instance name. So for each instance, it's buffering uh, the data. If I go in here, and I'm just going to duplicate this and call it conveyor2. So it's, it's going to be the same data, which isn't super exciting. But uh, if I go into my flow now, and we could use templating so that we don't explicitly have to ask or include this here. It would just get pulled in kind of automatically. But we'll explicitly add it. And what we'll see is now driving through the pipeline, we have conveyor one. After 10 updates, you'll start to see conveyor two. So we started to logically partition these, um, these files based on the type. Now we could do it by model. We could do it by name and model. You know, this, like I said, in, inside the pipeline, this partitioning of the buffer stage, you could write full-fledged JavaScript, so you could do whatever you want. Um, you could buffer stuff based on time intervals, uh, starts with this in the name, that kind of thing. So it's very, uh, very powerful. Like I said, in the future, we'll probably make it a little easier for the novice user to say, you know, I just want to partition by name, or I want to partition by model type, or, or that kind of stuff. Um, but really cool, right? It kind of shows you the power of pipelines. Before, you had to have multiple flows. You're, you're kind of dumping stuff on disk. Now, um, you can easily kind of do that in one pipeline, have a single view that can be fed by multiple flows and partitioned really easily. Uh, it just makes the manageability of this so much easier. And, and I think, you know, really cool. Uh, so try that out. Enjoy it. Send us your feedback. And until uh, the next video.